Welcome back to Your Best Bets. Uh, we got a really exciting episode tonight. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about golf largely for 2023. Um, we've done some other episodes with, you know, college basketball or NBA. But, um, you know, one of the things we kind of like to talk about on the show is entertainment, movies, TV shows. Um, haven't done one of those in a while. Um, by the way, episode 170. Ooh. Tonight, episode 170. So if you're still listening, appreciate you just just getting through it with us to get to this number. Um, recurring guests is with us to um, talk about something that is very meaningful to both of us. Um, I was I was looking it up today. Have not uh, have not seen him on the show since June 22. Uh, so about 15, 16 months have gone by since he's last been on the show. And that was to talk about the 2022 NBA Finals. Helen Quinlan is here. And uh, we're going to talk, we're going to debate our favorite horror movies, top five horror movies um, since it's Halloween. And um, Cullen, glad to have you back. Really excited to kind of get through this with you and have a good debate tonight. Wow. Well, thanks for having me, Phil. Uh, episode 170. That's pretty crazy, man. That's a long yeah. time. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's an accomplishment. You should be proud of that. And then I can't believe it's been over a year since I've been on that time flies. I know. Having fun, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, something um, like that. So, so some of the backstory with, with you and I about, I mean, this probably started like 10 years ago Oh yeah. where, where like if, if a, uh, we see a, a, a new trailer for a horror movie or a show that's kind of horror related, we I, I immediately think of you and I'll text you. But hey, man, you see you see this trailer. Have you heard of this one? And I, I think it's vice versa. Um, I don't have a lot of people in my life that I know that are just like horror movie fanatics, but you definitely fall into that category. Um, what What is it about horror movies in general that that draws you in? That's a great question. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think it all stems back to when I, I vivid, vividly remember when I was like five or six years old, maybe maybe seven, I don't know, but my brothers who you know, um, they used to scare me uh, just all the time wearing masks and I vividly have a nightmare rem uh, memory of, I don't know if it was Ryan or Sean, but wearing a Freddy Krueger mask and just chasing me around the house. I'm pretty sure that was Sean, if you can believe that, but um <laughs> So that I think I think in a twisted way, I, I always liked it. And my, my lovely mother uh, likes scary movies. So I do remember her watching them growing up. And really, I, I, watched, I watched Child's Play when I was like seven years old. And that scarred me as well. Um, so I was scared <laughs> of dolls for a long time. Still kind of am. Not as much now. But uh, and I just like the thrill. I don't know why. I like that. Um, <laughs> oh, what's it called? That I'm trying to look for that rush. You know, that just the thrill yeah. of it. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you on on that. There's um, there's like a feeling of like unease, a good a good horror movie anticipation of what's going to happen, um, and, and kind of that like your heart's beating a little quicker than if you're you know you're watching just a good old fashioned drama. Or um, you know, I love comedies as well, just as much as anyone. Um, but something about horror movies just always brings me back, and I'm I'm like I'm always dying for the next. Um, you know, the next great one. I'm always, I'm reading up on Twitter or Instagram trying to, um, you know, see what the buzz is for the next one. And unfortunately, a lot of the time I'm let down because my expectations carry so much weight with, with a lot of these movies. Um, but that's kind of where I lie with this. Um, you and I have gone back and forth a lot the last three or four years um, with, with some of these, I know there's some that you have seen that I have not, and there's some I have I have seen that you have you haven't seen, um, you know. But we we've I think we've thrown around this idea for a while for a podcast, and with it being Halloween, it just made sense that we could kind of get into some of our favorites, um, you know, what's actually in the top five, what we consider overrated, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, I guess when you made your list, first of all, what what was the criteria you used for, um, you know, for something to be a contender versus where it actually made the top five? Well, I went back and forth to, of what was the scariest to me or what I 
enjoy and can rewatch the most and enjoy every time I rewatch it. And I watched a few leading up to this and it's just that feeling of adrenaline pumping, like you said, and it kind of transports me back to that nostalgia of watching scary movies with your family or with, with your friends. And I don't know about you. I used to go to like the theaters a lot with in high school and just, you know, group of guys and girls and you're trying to get, you know, like cuddle up yeah. to one girl and keep her safe, all that fun stuff. I don't know if you did that. I did it. No, um, no. <laughs> so, no. Uh, no. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so it's gotta be a combination of scary and like, you know, well-written, well, you know, I don't know if well acted is the word, but just, just a good rewatch. I think that's what yeah. made my list, the top five of what it is. Yeah. I, so. I similarly, I, I looked at, you know, maybe when I was younger, it would just be like the scare factor and, you know, you know, how many good moments or jump scares. Um, but now, now that I'm older, I'm kind of like, what's, what's just like a good movie as well um what holds up well over time um you know you think of something like halloween made in 1979 obviously iconic um i'd be shocked if it's not on our top five but you can re you can rewatch halloween at this time of year and it, it holds up incredibly well um and and maybe that's because of um you know, the plot and it's not like a lot of special effects. Um, there's not a lot of, I guess there is some blood and gore, but like, you know, some of those maybe 80 movies where there's more effects and more just bloody gory, you know, I, I tried to watch Hellraiser like two years ago and I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And <laughs> I, I remember as a kid, I was like terrified of Pinhead and mm -hmm. just like the visual and it, he's a very cool looking kind of, iconic halloween villain right but like the actual movie i was like god this is so damn goofy um and so that's like one for example to me that just like on a rewatch like it didn't hold up so that's one thing i look at you know i look at obviously um and i don't know if you're more into like the slow burn horror or just like it's kind of it just comes right at you the the whole way um i like both um there's definitely you know, and there's there's some on on our list that I think qualify for both, but um, I think the plot's got to be decent, the writing's got to be decent, the acting's got to be at least passable. Um, and there's some on here where, you know, after I kind of if I've watched it recently, I'm like, eh, maybe the acting wasn't the best. Um, and then some where I can I can argue like great actors in it with the lead role that that's meaningful. Um, so that's kind of where I landed, um, but honestly a lot of it is is if it's on like amc this time of year amc reruns all, all these or if it's on tnt at a random time will i if i see it on will i will i sit down and watch it that that to me is kind of like that's kind of the main criteria right i absolutely agree that's a great way to put it because if, like there's some movies like i'm sure we'll bring up that are scary but i don't have any desire to rewatch again yeah. But I think it's the rewatch factor and that this one I'll mention later when we do our top five or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like, um, you know, you have a Christmas movies I have to watch every year. I have a couple yep. Halloween movies. I don't know if you're the same that I just have to watch. I must. So um, right. obviously sticks sticks with me and I transpose back to that nostalgia feeling. I love that nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, for instance, like when um, probably my favorite movie ever is twister um it's really? it's not it's not a great movie but you know me and my brother it's infinitely quotable to us in so many ways and i've seen it so many times and it was on the other night and i sat there and watched it for 10 minutes and i know exactly what's gonna happen i but it's just one of those things that always like oh, man, twisters on that. i gotta watch i gotta watch this scene or i gotta watch it through this moment um so same kind of feeling with with some of these movies um so i guess i guess let's get into it here um what are some movies on your list that didn't make your top five but i guess made your honorable mention list and and Tell me why they, they're on your list, period, and why they didn't make the top five. All right. So some honorable mentions. Um, Got to start with the classic is The Shining actually did not make my top five. Um, I did rewatch it, and 
it don't get me wrong it holds up it's great um but it just didn't make my top five um for whatever reason i just have five better um the sixth sense i don't know if you classify that as horror but that <laughs> that that did not quite make my top five i know how it's one of the biggest scenes that Get like literally used to give me nightmares. I don't know if you remember the scene where uh, he the calls tent? under the. Yep, the tent, the tent. Yeah, see, yes, wow, yes. that's weird. Yeah, yeah that... and, and maybe it may be one of the most iconic lines, right, in horror yes. movie history with I see dead people. I mean, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, shout, shout out M Night Shyamalan for like, I mean, that was just an unbelievable twist to the end of that movie, and um. On, on my honorable mention as well unfortunately for him it got he kind of just went too far down that road with future movies with i liked yeah. unbreakable unbreakable was cool and then then we get down to like the village i guess signs was good you know then it gets it kind of was like all right we're we're, we're kind of going overboard with this end of the movie twist you know yeah yeah the village the vill- i remember the village was scary until that the twist at the end i was like what that was it I don't know about you, I don't know how you felt about no. that, but yeah, yeah, for sure. And then with signs, also not really a well, I guess you call it a scary movie. Also, the one of the scary scenes that resonates with me is the the birthday party when the yeah alien cross. I remember, I think I literally might have peed my pants a little bit, so just a little bit, nothing to be ashamed about. Uh, but that was that was a great scene. So credit to M Night Shyamalan. So. <laughs> you know, in so many of these, some of these are. Would they they might be in the realm of sci-fi versus yeah. horror you know like science is more i guess science fiction um there's one on my list that's that's honorable mention alien which is i think probably more horror than science fiction but it's a little both um mm-hmm. i think one of the best just science fiction movies period i mean and if you want to talk about one with special effects that holds up over time alien is awesome it is still awesome. Um, and Sigourney Weaver killed it in the lead role. Um, everything about that movie is just, it's really, really good. You know, sequels, you know, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a big sequel guy, period, especially with horror movies. And we'll talk about that. But um, Alien holds up solidly on my list and is continuing. Yeah. That's a great point. I've not seen Alien in a long time, but I do remember the last time I saw it, really held up well, quite scary. Um, yeah, and I'm all about aliens. We could talk about that on a whole other podcast. We don't we don't got time for that tonight. But um, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. I'll have you one for the UFO pod. Which Let's go. I, which which is a thought of mine eventually. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, what else? Um, that that honorable mention. Yeah, I would say the Conjuring was close. Yeah. I yeah. did rewatch that and the Conjuring too. A lot of good scenes, a lot of good, I don't know if you call it the, mm-hmm. um, just the way the movie shot. Um, I think they mm-hmm. have a lot, a lot of like, what's going to happen? You know, you're you're dreading, you're on ease. Um, and they don't show a lot. Um, right. And just like, something about witches and like, I think a man plays mm-hmm. the, the scary w- witch in that movie. And that's just, I don't like that at all. I just, and I'll delve into that more later. But uh, yeah, the country was close, um, and then uh, actually, uh, in uh, Insidious was close. Okay, so I, I've never seen Insidious. What? Full, full disclosure, yes. That's yes. Uh, that's disappointing. You I gotta know. get that on your list. I, I I I we we shared some of our ideas beforehand, and I saw that one on your list, and I yeah I I had never seen it. Um, unfortunately, I think you'd enjoy it. I one more one one more thing that I was thinking of it for my criteria was originality as well. Um, you know, so many of these horror movies, especially it felt like um, I don't know mid two thousands to like mid twenty tens was like they kind of just started repeating themselves, like found footage, right? The found footage idea. Um, like I was at the theater for paranormal activity and it was a great viewing experience as a group. You know, it's like, it's, it's one of those where you're in the theater and it's a, it's a good horror movie. There's some good jump scares. It, it makes it more fun. Um, but it felt like for a while there, everything started to become found footage. Um, so I, I appreciate something 
and a lot of these that are on my list are original ideas, original thoughts. Um, it's just, you know, so many could be classified. And, and actually, this is a follow-up question, like slasher. Um, is it, it more, you know, more like Halloween or is it, you know, demons, you know, sort of Satanic? Say satanistic type of stuff like the exorcist or is it ghost or is it just a kind of a combination of all that i don't know what is there a preference that you have when you're watching horror movies or is it just it doesn't matter as long as it's good that's a great question um i would say like i enjoy the slashers i think those are fun and i kind of much go with a group of buddies go to the theater mm -hmm. uh, i don't really like the found footage um, except for one which is uh right it's another honorable mention i might as well just say it, but blair witch i think you probably have that hopefully maybe close i don't know because partially i thought that was real back then because i was like 11 years old when that came out so was, that was scary as hell um yep. but it's more like it's just like the i like the slow burn i think um mm. and just no 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 i don't really like the gore and unnecessary tons of jump scares like a good jump scare you can't beat that but right. uh I like also the music is huge to me. I, I love Great the music. Point. Yeah. Great so point. that adds a lot to it. Um, yes. yes. But yeah, yeah, I'd say that. Good point. I, the music and the, and the score, whatever you want to call it, is yeah. it's it's a huge piece of horror movies. And obviously, Halloween um, kind of created that whole vibe with the music. It's unbelievable. Um, I think of it follows had is probably the closest thing with the music that I can think of. Even in like the trailer, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, "Holy shit! This movie's got this that has that feel like the just by the music and sometimes how it's shot." Like it follows, and I don't want to get into it follows too much until I know it's going to be on our list. Mm -hmm. Just the way it was shot, it was kind of like this late fall vibe. It's gray and michigan and just kind of depressing and um just the way some of these films are shot or you know make a big difference as well um so going back um sorry i got us off track there um sorry. so you, what was your last one you mentioned um oh the conjuring the conjuring probably and then okay. like insidious was close uh yep. blair witch blair witch was close yeah. Okay. yeah foreshadowing Blair Witch is in my top really okay yes yes that's, that's I don't want to give I don't want to give it all away but yeah that's um, no, hard <laughs> did you ever see um the descent I've never seen that in entirety I've I've switched it on a few times and that was terrifying the parts that I saw and I do need to watch that yeah I I actually saw this um with my dad in the movie theater when it came out like 2005 or six, which yeah. is really weird. Cause I think it's probably the last movie I saw with my dad in the movie <laughs> theater. I, I don't even know why. Like I, I thought about that today. I'm like, did I really go see that with him uh, of all people, but really. And that, that's one of those that's uh, goes to my point of originality. Um, you know, these, these group of group of friends, these ladies go into a, a cave and it's, Things go really wonky from there, and then you know part of part of the 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 scary part is them turning on each other, which is sometimes a huge part of horror movies. Is the yeah. human element? What's what's more terrifying than humans? Um, you know, going off the rails at times, and there's some horror movies that are like that, like 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 The Shining, for instance. Um, you know, um, that's kind of what that movie is about. This guy losing his sanity. Um, which, by the way, The Shining is on on my most overrated list as well. Whoa! Yeah. Wow. That's that's a shocker right there. I know, right? Um, I I I I can see why people buy into that being terrifying, but it just didn't do it for me. Um, and I don't know why there's, there's some cool scenes, but I think, I think I feel that way because some people feel so strongly being as it being like one of the two or three greatest horror movies ever. And I'm just not there. Um, I think it's good. I know there was a lot of, there's a lot of controversy about that movie from, you know, Stephen King's book versus Stanley Kubrick 
you know, directing it. And I know Stephen King didn't agree with how he portrayed the movie or the book into the movie. Um, obviously great lead role by Jack Nicholson, but I'm just not, I'm just not there on the shining and it's, it's not on my honorable mention. It made the most overrated, but I mean, sure. It's a, it's a good horror movie, but it's, I just don't consider it an all time great in my eyes. Um, what else do I have? And in my honorable mention, you mentioned the sixth sense. I have that. I have nightmare on Elm street. Um, the first one, the original, um, I remember seeing it as a kid. I was scared to death of going to sleep and, you know, Freddie taking me out in my dreams. I mean, that, that you need to talk about originality and uniqueness and just an all time horror movie character villain. I mean, that had it now. Did we need 19 sequels? No. Um, and, and that's kind of, I mean, Halloween trumps all of that with, you know, re, right. like two or three series of remakes. Um, but uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, I thought was, was really cool. Um, I think it holds up reasonably well now as well. Um, so yeah, that one's on my honorable mention list. Yeah, Nightmare, it was very close as well, but also I blame that on my brothers for chasing me around with that mask, but it was still very scary. It was terrifying. Um, Sinister was also my honorable mention. That's the last one. My I don't know if you watched that. That one scared the crap out of me too. I did. I didn't have it on my list, but I kind of just forgot about it. You know, I haven't seen it in a long time, but yeah. it, it, it was good. Okay, I also have on my honorable mention list uh, Dawn of the Dead, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, which I think was in two thousand three or four. And I don't know if you saw the remake. Um, I did. But, I did. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I argue the opening scene of the remake of Dawn of the Dead is maybe just the best opening scene of a horror movie in the last 25 years. I mean, it is incredible. Now, it's incredible. I, I You're going to be mad, but I haven't seen it probably since I think I watched it when it came out, then maybe one more time. For whatever okay. reason, like, zombie movies don't do it for me i don't know why but i do remember sure. that, not that scene and like they come through the walls or something in the, well, in the beginning well she, um i mean the actress is sarah polly she wakes up and she, like her husband is in the bathroom and she, it's it's not him it's a zombie but it's just it is like that's how it starts and it's just it just comes at you hard and it comes at you hard and fast and you're like holy shit i didn't expect that <laughs> Um, the rest of the movie is a typical zombie movie, which, you know, I, I, you know, George Romero is kind of the king of the zombie movies, but the remake, and I don't know if you're a big fan of um, The Walking Dead. I was at least the first five or six seasons before it kind of, um, kind of wore tired on me or The Last of Us, which was an incredible, incredible show. If I love The Last of Us, never watched The Walking Dead. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I lo love The Last of Us, though. Okay. But The Walking Dead zombies were very slow moving, very slow moving. Yeah. Um, but on the Dawn of the Dead, they were well, they were wildly athletic. <laughs> I mean, they were like um, they were like Tyreek Hill out there moving. And um, but th that movie was kind of wild. Um, it's on my um, honorable mention list, mainly for that opening scene. Uh, I also have The Ring on mine as well um oh, yeah. oh yeah obviously it's a uh you know it was stolen from uh japan for, i think that was in the late 90s and then early 2000s it, it was made over here um you know the idea of watching that video and then you you basically die within was it like three days or after watching it or 24 hours i can't remember seven days yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah. I thought that was a kind of a cool concept and um you know the video that you watch that was kind of a creep creepy vibe creepy feel to it um i have uh midsummer on on mine i know you have not seen it i have um, not florence Pugh. i think that was kind of a big breakthrough um i it's just kind of a good it's 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 really weird number one which I'll, i'm always into odd and weird things um, but this was Ari Aster's second movie after Hereditary, and um, I, I I didn't see it for a while, but uh, it kind of becomes like this, you know, horror version of also like a 
feminist take on 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 um this relationship she has and it gets it kind of spirals from there it's just kind of a weird interesting movie i don't know if it's traditional horror but it's it's something um i have it's on 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 my list as well um the 2017 version now going back to when i was a kid um the original it the miniseries when uh tim curry was the pennywise uh figure i think it was 1989 i was six years old um I lived so close to my school that I could walk to school and I fucking refused to walk to school after <laughs> watching that. And I, and I don't know why looking back, I'm like, why did my parents let me watch that when I was like six or seven? Like what I, like, I, I'm sure you as a parent, you're, you're like, okay, my kids have to be a certain age to watch certain things. Right. And, and I, that's the way that I have parents as well. I mean, I just recently let my kids who are 11 and 9 watch Jurassic Park. This was over the summer. This the first time they saw Jurassic Park. Um, Independence Day. They watched that for the first time this summer, too. And they, they were kind of freaked out about the aliens there. So yeah. the fact that my parents at like seven years old <laughs> allowed me to watch it <laughs> is like insane, right? So I refused to walk to school. Um <laughs> because I didn't want to walk past the damn sewer for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, um, I mean, I don't blame you, really. And I, I'm getting to, we have a similar trend here that our parents either allowed us or maybe I snuck in with my older brothers to watch these scary movies, which is kind of crazy because I was terrified then, but now I love it. So yeah, it must and, be some and, kind of... And I know at least one of your brothers is completely yes. opposite and terrified of even discussing it. <laughs> He came, came and talked to him about it. He, right. he hates it, which I, I respect. I don't even bring it up anymore. So, yeah. Uh, but um, it's interesting how that works out. Yeah. So the the original version of it was, I, I guess, like a TV miniseries, and it was, I think, at moments, kind of um, unintentional comedy. Um, uh, I, I think Pennywise was kind of more like kind of derived from humor and that kind of thing. But the, the 2017 version, um, and I can't think of the actor that played him, but incredible. Yeah, yeah, Skarsgård, incredible. Um, yeah. And then the following, It Too. Um, I didn't love It Too, but the, it, it, the 2017 version is on my list because it was, I, I think it was pretty awesome. It was really well done. It was really long. I think it was like three hours. Um, yeah. But I uh, did rewatch, I rewatched both of those. I kind of fast forward through It Too because. I didn't love that one as well, but the first uh, 2017 of it was great. That was still kind of like yeah. the, the group of friends and Bill Skarsgård. Mm -hmm. He did he did awesome. And uh, I, yeah, I do remember going with my buddies to see that in theater. And mm -hmm. the first scene, I did not expect uh, Pennywise to bite the kid's fucking arm off. So <laughs> right, that, right, that was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else do I have? I had six sense. Um, I think the uh, last two we have not mentioned that that you have already covered. Um, I have the strangers on on my list. Um, for anyone not familiar, I think this was two thousand eight. Um, just a, a, three people randomly, um, you know, concoct a home invasion of just a couple that, without knowing them and not without knowing who they are, and kind of just terrorize them for the like for a whole night and. Uh, it's just it was an interesting premise at the time. Um, I remember my wife Sarah came with to the theater to see that with me, and she was not pleased at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame her. That's a terrifying. I mean, when you it's brought that up, like, it's a terrifying thought, right? It really is because it could really happen. I mean, it's just one of those things like whoa, makes you really think, you know? Well, and you think of like. Okay, you think of like Halloween, like Michael Myers going back to his hometown to, you know, um, yeah. there's there's some sort of connection of why he's seeking, um, you know, to cause destruction. But there's no there's no good reason for this 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 crew and the strangers to do what they did. It's just a, it's just random, uh, randomly picking a couple just to to kind of torture or terrorize. And then eventually, by the way, spoiler alert. The whole podcast and i if we yeah, should put I that out there it. spoiler alert um you know take these two out so strangers made my list because again unique idea you just kind of different from from the norm 
Um, and then I also had um, my favorite from last year, uh, Barbarian. Um, and I've gotten to the point <laughs> last couple of years where I, I, I more or less want to be entertained as well with some yeah. of these horror movie. Uh, we obviously did malignant uh, review in 2021 yeah. because it was so wildly insane. Did not make my list, but it was just, <laughs> it was kind of just fun. And uh, barbarian was, had some great moments of true horror, but it was also just kind of like, what the fuck, what the fuck just happened? And it was then it got kind of fun and it was funny moments and Justin Long was making me laugh. And, um, so that's my favorite. That's my favorite one from last year. Um, made my list just as a fun rewatch. I rewatched it um, earlier this summer because I was like, I got to see it again to see if I really enjoy it the second time around. And I did. And uh, so that one also made my uh, honorable mention list. Barbarian actually was number five on my top five. Loved it. I remember when you made recommended the, it, it made uh, the top five. Yeah. Okay. So so what did what did you like about it so much to, to, to crack the top five? Because that's that's kind of saying a lot. That's big, yeah. So kind of um building off your inner I just want to be entertained and kind of like keep my interest the whole time. Because like you said, the past 15 years really it's kind of hard to find a really good scary movie. Um and then like the first half, also what's you know, Bill Skarsgard, he's just creepy, he does a great job being creepy. He's in that movie as well. Right. Uh, the first half is just like scary, just creepy, scary, like what the hell? And then it just goes off the rails um, and uh, it's super fun. And Justin Long is hilarious, fun, plays a great douchebag in that movie. Um, kind of not to change the subject, but Justin Long, another movie of mine that made uh, honorable mention was Jeepers Creepers, actually. So I rewatched it. It kind of held up better than yeah. you think. Um, the, is it the, the opening scene of that is where they're driving right him and his sister on the country road yep. and that's where they see him like on the side of the road right and then he comes and chases them yeah he i think i can't remember if he hits like he's gets on their ass first and then honks and then they he's like flips him off and then he rides by him maybe and then they see him dump something down the the chutes yes. and so that kind of always makes me think like in real life like when like road rage i'm like it could be the Jeepers Creepers guy. For all I know, I can't flick this guy off. That's right. I can't honk. That's right. You know, so like, kind of like yeah. the strangers could have in real life. Not saying there's a, you know, flying demon out there eating people's faces and tongues and stuff, but you know, who's to know. say though? Who's to say? You never know with this world. <laughs> you never know. Um, but yeah, so, just along, yeah, he's kind of created like this. I think he was in another horror great. movie somewhere along the line that I've probably lost track of. But the Walrus, the Walrus, probably. No. Uh, have you seen that you one? You could be right. You could be right. I don't know. Um, I'll check it out. But yeah, great, great kind of villain in Barbarian that you didn't expect. Yeah. Um, Did not. Expect you're right. That. the The first half of that movie is like, okay, I know, I know where this is going. I've seen this before. You know, the basically the premise is a, a girl and a guy book the same Airbnb. They decide right. to kind of make it work and you're like okay this guy's he's he looks like he's untrustworthy bill skarsgård he's you just don't trust him you think he's up to some shit and then yeah. and then like 40 minutes in it goes a different path and you're you're just i i you know it's just that's what i appreciated so much because it did a complete 180 and went yeah. down this other other road that you're just like i haven't seen that you know yeah, you don't see like a an old like mutant lady uh, breast trying to breastfeed uh, Justin Log or bottle feed whatever or breastfeed. It. I can't remember. It was so yeah. wild that it was awesome. It was great. And then like when Bill, Bill Skarsgård gets his head smashed in. Sorry, spoilers for all this, but that was pretty awesome too. I mean, I was like, what in the hell is happening? So it was great. The actress did very great too. She was good. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm really happy that it made number five. That was on your list. I didn't expect that and. Um, I, I, it was, it was probably just outside my top five. Um, yeah. all right. I guess I'll go with my, my number five. Um, this was one where I, I really debated because I'm like, how much do there's, there's certain parts of this movie that I have issues with, but overall, I just, I think it sort of reinvented, uh, horror movies at the time. Um, and that's scream. 
Um, yep. I think it was made in 1996. Um, so you saw probably for the next five to 10 years, kind of a bunch of followers of that type of movie after that. I know what you did last summer, kind of this one that I think of. Um, but also as far as opening scenes go, maybe one of the most iconic opening scenes uh, with Drew Barrymore um, and and Ghostface you know, at the time we didn't know who that was, but getting the phone call and the whole conversation that takes place after that, a good five, 10 minutes, and then eventually she gets murdered. Um, but just it, it really funny, number one, entertaining. Yep. Um, it kind of made, it was very self-aware, it made fun of, the typical horror movie tropes, you know, Jamie Kennedy in the movie would bring him up every other scene. It feels like yeah. um, also sort of a whodunit situation, um, you know, with, the, with, you know, a couple of the main characters, um, you know, and I guess it kind of turns into a, a bit of a slasher movie, but just kind of that fun entertaining vibe as well. That's what, that's where I debated like, okay, I don't, find it particularly scary but I, I think it's just a favorite yeah scream it was number two for me so that was i i wow. love scream. always uh, number two always rewatchable he kind of nailed all the major points just funny uh i can't remember his name in real life but uh Stu, the not billy but the other killer Stu, the funny one yeah so not um, the book he, I can't remember his name in real life, but he is Matthew Lillard, I think. Yeah, Lillard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was hilarious. Yep. Um, and just like the Who Done It, I remember being, you know, going to the theater with friends and just like, oh no, you know, we all thought it was one person, and then just it being right. two was pretty cool twist at the end. Yeah. Also, in Star Power, uh, Courtney Cox. I yep. mean, that's obviously right up your alley with uh, Friends. Um, <laughs> that was right. Yep. That was right at the peak of when Friends was getting getting really getting a lot of momentum uh david arquette he was really funny as police yeah. officer um so yeah a lot of good elements uh to i always think of the garage like the garage hanging as, yeah. as one of the best kills of in, in horror movies i think of that one a lot as well and um, the doggy door of the garage that was brutal yeah oh, brutal yeah. <laughs> and right, a bit so, a camel fan she was great all right, so we know Barbarians five for you and Scream is two, um, and yeah, I have wow, I have Scream is five. So my number four is the Blair Witch Project, and um, this to me hits hits. And I know a lot of people think it wasn't scary. Um, it might fall into some people's overrated list. I get it all. I do originality at the time though. Like I was, I think this came out ninety nine, and I was. Um, I don't know if it was the fall of 99, but I was either at the end of my freshman year or starting my sophomore year of high school. And I I mean, at the time, the internet was just starting to really catch momentum. Got it. This is where I sound just fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> right? We're getting old, man. We're getting old. I know. But like, that was one of the first movies I can remember, like, where there was internet buzz. Um and it was like an event where people wanted to go see it. And it was made off, it was made for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. And it made a gazillion dollars. Um, but just the idea of it, you know, found footage of these kids that went out into the, the forests and um the unknown out there to me is always kind of a scary thought when you're out in the wilderness not the wilderness but like a, a foresty area and it's dark and it's gray and there's they they got lost there's no path home and then you hear sounds and shit like that and it's just if you think about it like that's it's kind of it makes you feel uneasy you know oh for sure i i remember seeing that too and i thought it was real the entire time i was watching it so because i was you know, a couple right. of years a couple of years ago in the US, I was like seventh grade, maybe eighth grade, I don't know. And yeah. again, me, my voice thought it was real. And I remember literally I could vividly remember my heart like beating during the tent scene where they shake the tent and they run out and scream. Right. What is that? You can't like you said, you can't see it, you don't know what's out there, your mind fills it in. Mm -hmm. Uh it was very terrifying. And obviously like the ending scene of uh the guy staying in the corg and then she getting hit in the head or that was pretty messed up. Yeah, and and I think I think you know I I do some deep dives on Reddit from time to time, <laughs> and I, a lot of people have a problem with the ending. I get that, you know, I get that as well. But 
I didn't have a problem with it. I also think I keep thinking of things that that make me appreciate some of these movies is sometimes the unknown, what you can't see, is more terrifying than what you can. And actually, that's the case for a lot of the movies that that are on my list. And Blair Witch falls into that. And I just, I don't know. I just think again, I could I could watch Blair Witch today, and I think it holds up. It was basically the start of found footage type of movies. And the, the originality of it uh, is why it's on my list. And uh, yeah, I feel pretty solid about that. Number four. Uh, so we know you're two and five. What's your number four? Number four is It Follows. So I, I that was probably your best recommendation for me. I remember you telling me about that back then. Uh, we kind of touched on it, but the music, I still will just play that album. <laughs> I love like, as you know, I love Stranger Things and that oh, yes. for that soundtrack. Um, just something with the synth, the sizers, the eerie, kind of Halloween-y feel. I mean, honestly, that adds a lot to the movie. And it's just, you know, <laughs> you don't know just the idea of something slowly following you that once, you know, yeah. obviously you know the premise. but right. um, yeah. And just like great shots. Um, mm-hmm. Great. I got like the group of kids, a group of teenagers, whatever. And then uh, one of the scenes always sticks with me still sometime when I turn off a light in a room and I hear something that when that huge ass guy comes walking in, yep. it makes me want to just jump off the roof. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. so that, that and rewatchability is I, anytime I hear it's on, on or find it, Oh, I'll watch that. Great, great movie. So for sure. Top, top five, number four. I have it as number three on my list okay. and uh, okay. agree with everything you said. Um, the, the, the I guess presence or I, I don't know what we label it as being a a shape shifting presence that could sh- you know shape shift into different humans and it could look like an old dude it could look like a, a girl it could whatever um, it was really again orig- original unique uh, you know it just made you feel like shit I don't know what's gonna happen next. Here's my problem with it, uh, and I and Ooh. I can be critical, and I'm going to yeah. be critical of coming up of my probably you know my my number two movie is it didn't it just didn't land the ending to me to become like the all time goat right um, you know the, the Jordan or LeBron whichever way oh. you side Jordan of course <laughs> but yeah yeah no I can see that no, the ending um, was a little fizzled out. And I think that's my problem with a lot of horror movies is like, it's like a really good football game through three and a half quarters. And then that last quarter, a team runs away with it with like three touchdowns and it's not close. I, a lot of these horror movies can't seem to stick the landing at the end. And I, I have a real problem with my number two coming up, which disappoints Ooh. me greatly. Um, but <laughs> It follows was great until about the last twenty minutes, and then it feels it feels like they didn't really know how to finish it, how to end it, yeah. and I, and I just didn't love the way that they came up with, you know. Yeah, the pool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a little yeah, weird. It was a little weird. Kind of fizzled out. I agree, but um, that is disappointing. I can see why that would make it not number one for you or number two, even so. But still, the whole premise is is great. All right, you have. We know you have Scream at number two. I think mm-hmm. we've 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 hammered that one home pretty well. Um, my number two is Hereditary. Um, really, really. I wanted this to be number one. I I I fought I fought about this all day within myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like watching <laughs> and actually Sarah watched this movie with me and she was like like pissing her pants the whole time because it is just by the way like a, you know tony collette is like i think like a real like a real actress right like she's been nominated for oscars and like she was unbelievable in this movie and then this movie is more like you know family trauma and how they deal with grief and things like that but also like this kind of presence in the house as well but the whole movie is just like this feeling of dread and you're anticipating something bad coming and 
it do, it just does an amazing job of making you kind of scared shitless of what's going to happen next. The car scene with the girl <laughs> is it sticks with me. It's and I it, here here's another thing. Like if 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 a movie like a scene or whatever sticks with me, day after weeks after i still think about that scene it sticks with me because i'm like that that was that was fucking awful (laughs) um and it was so shocking i think i was just like oh my god and um but i loved how they they did that in the movie with the brother just driving home and like he was in like this state of shock um the whole movie i thought was incredible and it was my favorite horror movie until like the last 15 minutes. And then the last 15 minutes, it just went, it went completely off the rails in a, di- a direction I never saw coming. I don't even like to think of the last 15 minutes when I think of the rest of the movie. Um, I just, I can't even fathom how that related to the whole rest of the movie. Um, so I was disappointed with that, but not enough to, not enough for me to not consider it my number two. Yeah, I, I remember you talking about this, how much you loved it. So uh, I think it took me a little while to watch it, but then I did. I have not rewatched it since, to be honest, but three scenes will stick with me. Obviously, the car scene. I had to stop the movie and like go do something for a little bit. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. That was so yeah. unexpected and messed up. I didn't hear right. anything about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it sticks with you. It does. It makes me never want to put my arms or head out of the car again. <laughs> right um and then the one the part where whatever he gets because i don't know i can't remember what happens in class where he starts beating himself up and smashing his head on the desk messed yeah. up yeah. and then the, i can't remember who it was but in the ceiling sit, sitting up on the ceiling and kind of out of focus and into focus very well done yeah yeah and yeah. then the end is that when they float up to the little hut thing is that the same movie i'm thinking of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. and it's like yeah, the brother is like the leader of this satanic tribe of dead people, and they're nude, and it's just it's really weird. Yeah, um, new people I, are always stuff. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Mo- most, movie. yeah, most, yeah, most are. Um, yeah. yeah, I just, I just, it, it literally disappoints me to this day because i'm like while i was watching i'm like this is incredible like it's just it's terrifying and um just the tension was building and um the scene where the husband was on fire also oh, yeah i mean oh, yeah. shit i mean it was just like there's just a lot of those moments that i'll remember um but yeah unfortunately the ending kind of it kind of ruined it um so leading up to number number one What's yeah. your number one? Well, I, I don't think I've set my number three yet, actually. But um, oh, do we skip your three? It's it's, it's okay. It's it, and it's gonna be controversial. I think I think I kind of alluded to you maybe oh. a couple days ago. Uh, Get Out is my number three. Oh, okay. Not a okay. traditional horror movie, so I know that's <laughs> maybe throwing a few for a loop. But I rewatched it. Great, great movie. Um, just a whole new type of spin on a scary movie. I don't know. I actually told. Uh, Ryan to watch. I just texted him a little bit. I'm like, you got to watch Get Out because I think he could actually handle that one. I don't think it's a, you know, no demons or anything like that possession, but that's just right. great direction. I think, you know, Jordan Peele's going to be great for years to come. Um, but that was a different type of scary, but mm-hmm. rewatchable to me in a lot of ways. Like psychological horror, right? Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychological. Yeah. Like what's going on? What, and then just the twist of you great. Trails amazing yeah. twist right um and yeah, yeah the, i i have i think get out's a great movie i just don't consider it i guess horror. Tra- traditional horror i i actually i sent you my notes in my phone and <laughs> i have in it's it's titled own category jordan peele movies yeah, and, i saw that and jaws <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, I mean that's kind of like a scary, but it's not a horror right. movie. Yeah, so I, that, but. Right. obviously we weren't alive in the seventies, but everything I, right. I I have researched and read about Jaws when it came out was like it was it was kind of like the thing, and it made people terrified to go in the ocean. Uh, yeah, obviously still, that makes sense. 
yeah, I would not go more than knee deep in the ocean. I, I'm serious. I'm so terrified of it. It's it's the no. We don't know what's in there, man. There could be anything in there. Well, that's their territory. I'm not going to the ocean. Nope. Nope. Not doing Wait, it. Uh, I was I was on vacation with with your brother, and my sister. Yeah. It's like 2016 down in Anna Maria, and I was, we were kayaking. And we, I was way the hell out, and this wave just came, and I mean, it completely flipped me. <laughs> Where I was way out there, I mean, I mean, obviously I had a life vest on, but like, my kayak was upside down. I had to pull. I mean, it took me an hour to bring it back into shore, but I was way the hell out there. I had some moments where I was like, this doesn't feel great, you know? You just don't yeah. know. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, the last time I did it was with Feltz, you know. Uh, we went on like spring break in college. I'm not, I'm not a great swimmer, and we swam out to the buoy. And like, have, I almost had a mini panic attack. I'm like, I'm just gonna die out here. I can't swim. I'm just gonna die here. I'm I'm dead. But he's like, just get on your back. Let's float back in. I got you. So thanks, Belts, for uh, keeping me calm because I was terrified. I was terrified. Yes, the Jaws is like I have it in its own category because I don't think it's it's not a traditional horror, but. Is it? It's like a thriller, but it also made people kind of, you know, I don't yeah. want to say change their lifestyle, but like avoid the water, and that's it's kind of a huge impact, right? And Jaws holds up incredibly well, I think, for forty yeah. plus years later. I mean, you could kind of have some qualms with, you know, the special effects of the shark and or whatever, but like mm -hmm. just just the tension and like and, t and the build up, that slow burn, loved it. The Jordan Peele movies to me are completely unique and completely in their own category because Get Out, Us, and Nope, they all have like this social commentary yeah. piece to it, right? Which is know. which is cool, right? Like, you know, and I don't, I don't, you saw Nope, right? Uh, yeah, but to be fair, I was kind of like sleeping and then waking up, you know, so I don't remember it quite okay. well. But, <laughs> okay. uh, but Get Out, I loved. Us was good. Then Nope, I need to rewatch because I, I haven't, you know. Okay. Nope, you know, is like more sci-fi to me, uh, completely sci-fi. But like, you know, the 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 theme is, you know, kind of sensationalism and money and got to be the first to film something and kind of just representing today's times and then get out obviously with sort of the racist undertones and things like that i think yeah. they're really well done and he's great at what he does i just don't know and i don't have a problem with you having it in your top five but that's kind of where i stand on jordan peele because i just put him in his own category because they're just so they're just unlike anything i've seen out there yeah so, no i agree they're you're they're unique and i knew that would be kind of a twist in the the top five there but i, I just rewatched it I, I loved it i was still on, on edge a little bit even though i knew what was happening but it's just it's its own category that's great i'm sorry we skipped we skipped it. i'm no, sorry that's all right that's, that's okay don't don't apologize yeah, you, you got to call me on it when i when i make a mistake here i just had to give um, it its love <laughs> so so we're two our number one for each yes. of us right what are what are some of your other did you have any other overrated i did i did i had a few <laughs> overrated yeah. lists um and i've rewatched a few of these um recently actually so friday the, the 13th the original mm -hmm. overrated to me i was kind of boring know, yeah kind of boring yeah very boring and slow yeah. and not very scary yeah. i know it's the one where jason's not the killer um yeah. so i didn't watch the sequels but that, that did not hold up well and this might be a little controversial but i thought the exorcist was very overrated actually I haven't seen that I, since I've been maybe 15, I, but yeah, I was not scared I, I, almost at all. I have it on my list as well. I do. Really? I do. Yeah. I know a lot of people think that's the top scary movie ever. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, iconic yeah, iconic mo moments, iconic scenes. I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I had Saw on, on my most overrated. I, okay. I enjoy I enjoyed it, but for their for it to spawn what nine sequels? Yeah. Is that where we're at? I mean, with this latest number, one, number ten, I think this one, yeah, I think it's right. saw ten, yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. I'm just like I'm like that's insane. Um, yeah. I know you, I know you have not seen this yet. Um, just came out earlier this year, and it's actually streaming on Hulu now. Okay, it's yeah, it's yeah. Skeena Marink, 
And um, I can't tell you, you know how excited I was to see this. I mean, I would talk from like last, yeah, probably like last October through the point it actually came to the local theater in January. I mean, I was like, I was like just reading and searching for stuff and the new trailer and people's reviews. And, and we got so much internet buzz and it was, I can't tell you how, and I, I need to rewatch it myself to see if I feel the same way. I went with my brother, I went with my nephew, uh, my brother's girlfriend. They were like, what is this? This is the worst thing <laughs> I've ever seen. And I kind of felt that way a little bit myself. Um, I hate to say, but I was trying to give it a fair shot. I was trying to understand the perspective. And, and by the way, if any, if you have not heard of this movie, the premise is, you know, these two kids, I don't know, their age is probably six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. They wake up in the middle of the night. They're looking for their dad, their, their or their mom and dad. Their parents are gone in their in their house. The windows and the doors of the house are completely gone. And it's like there's that fuzziness on the TV. I think it's set in like the late 80s, early 90s. You know, you remember what, like i don't know if you ever woke up as a kid but like so my dad this, this is going back again bringing my dad back into it. my dad worked third shift and so my mom was the only parent at home at night my dad would leave for work at like 10 30 at night and my mom would always sleep on the couch fall asleep on the couch and i would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be that that white fuzziness on the tv and there's something just kind of eerie and spooky about that as a kid and there's just it just always kind of felt like uneasy um and that's kind of what this movie's about it's just like there's something in the house but they can't get out there's no one to help them um, but it's filmed in a way that is really kind of hard to understand it's hard to hear some, some of it it's it's just it's different than anything you've ever seen i guarantee it that's why i'm, I'm fascinated when you actually get a chance to watch it um what it's like but i was incredibly disappointed incredibly disappointed by it i can't even can't even say how much i was i was pissed off about it <laughs> i do remember when you, you texted me with a theory i said tim hated it and you, you, got, you said you had, to, you had to think about it you were so you didn't know yeah. what to even say like i gotta think about it for a bit and i remember the trailers and it looked creepy that the the idea of it the premise of it sounded great but it sounds like maybe that was yeah. not a story it seemed like I, I heard a lot of people say maybe you it felt like a dream, which is kind of mm -hmm. scary in its own right. And I agree with the TV fuzz. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and like brothers falling asleep and you know, walking through there and I almost thought they were zombies or robots or something. As a kid, you just don't know what's going on. So yeah. I don't know if it's similar to that. So I think I would enjoy it. Uh, but now that I know what you've said about it, I might taper my expectations down, just try to enjoy the vibe. Um, I definitely will watch it because I need to. So right. Yeah. Any other overrated, overhyped? I don't really think I have anything listed that I had, but um, I rewatched. I know what you did last summer a little bit ago. That was all right, yeah. but um, it's not quite as good as Scream, you know. But I don't think it's properly rated. That's all. Yeah, that's all I got. I, really, I did not see any of the new screams. I don't know. Did I you? Were the they, most were recent they... one was, yeah, the most recent one I heard was good, but I don't. I have not seen them either. But I do kind of want to want to check those out because, I mean, I will top the the original, but I've heard the past two are, are scary and watchable, so I might put that on my list. All right, number one, what is it? I think I think we gotta have the same one, right? I mean, I'll, I I think we have to. It's gotta be the original Halloween, correct? It's correct. Yeah. Wow, it's the first time we agree on the best thing ever, like Jordan and LeBron here, huh? You know, and and I actually just I rewatched it last week, um, and you know, there's so speaking of Jordan LeBron. People remember Jordan. People remember Jordan like he never missed a a, a game winning shot. They, they he never turned the ball over one time. Like his shooting percentage was probably eighty eight percent. People remember Jordan in a way that is like this godlike figure, and obviously the best player ever. I'm not saying that, but like 
he was not perfect. And the, the, he missed game winning shots. And um, he had bad games. He had nine of 26 shooting games. It happened. I watched him. I don't believe it. I kind of have that feeling watching Halloween again. And it's my number one. But I'm like, people, people put Halloween on a pedestal like it was the perfect movie. And I have it as number one, but it's 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 not the perfect movie. There's they just you know it's like you remember it to be a certain way, and then you watch it, and you're like, okay, there's you know maybe some some things here that are I don't know not that are kind of silly. You know why did they why did why didn't they escape here or why did they stick around or you know that kind of thing. Of course, you can say that for most horror movies, right? There yeah. wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be a movie if they if they went the other way. Um, but that's my, <laughs> but but I guess my point is is I just it's still the best, um, but it's not perfect. Yeah, I could I could see that. Uh, aside from the Jordan slander, I agree with what you said there. Um, <laughs> but no, I also rewatched it this past week, and it's it's my um, my Christmas vacation of Halloween movies. I have to watch Christmas Vacation because it's the ghost. Love that. Everyone yeah. knows that. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll probably watch Halloween again, to be honest with you, um, as it gets closer to Halloween. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've already alluded to the score. Perfect. Yeah. Um, perfect. Theme song. Best best song like ever in a scary movie. Um, and just like, I think it's the, uh, I mean, Michael Myers is perfect killer. It wasn't anything. You fill that in with your head. Like, why did he kill his sister in the beginning? Kind of jarring as well. Um, you don't see his face except for when they barely lift his mask right. at the top of the stairs there right, um, right at the end just yeah. the blank yeah the blank the blank scare the black eyes as dr loomis mm-hmm. you know calls it it's just terrifying it is i mean it's and like yeah. it's not perfect but like the point of view when you're in the mask with them or here is breathing yeah. great um just the setting even though i know it's shot in california it feels like the midwest because it's yeah. supposed to be in illinois it just feels like halloween and just that eeriness Love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. I, I think also just the moments where like you're the, the camera just it, it, it kind of changes and he just appears. You like when um when Lori is upstairs early in the movie and there's like a clothesline of clothes yep. and then she looks out and boom, he's just there and it's just like holy shit. You know, it's just like it gives you the chills. Yeah. Um so yeah, there's a lot of really cool moments like that. Um, you're you're right. I mean, everything you said is completely true, and it's why it's number one, and it's completely rewatchable. It's it is like it's it's like the perfect way to state it. It's like it's you know like Christmas Vacation. My family, you know, my kids love Christmas Vacation. They started watching it, so now you know it's just tradition, Halloween tradition. You just gotta watch. You gotta watch the original Halloween. So I'm on board with you. I think it's it's number one. Um, I really fought. I really fought it hard, but I just I had to put it there. Um, I'm kind of surprised you have it there. I mean, that we agree is shocking. Uh, I don't know what to do now. You know, we can't argue about it. But um, like you said, it's just the quick shots of like like you said, her in the bedroom looking out and then her in the classroom looking out was just staying in there staring at her car and then you know, obviously look back and he's not there anymore yeah. um uh, just terrifying and the 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 hedge scene where he pops out and then is gone just just great it's just so simple yeah but you just feel at least the whole time he's gonna pop out and get you and it's just it's, it's classic it's great S- somewhere on youtube there is a um there's like a video shot of the original Halloween in a movie theater, like opening weekend and people losing their shit. And it's really cool. <laughs> though. You know, it's that it's an audience together. Like at the end when he, you know, he sits up, at, you know, in the background, yes. um, people lost their minds. And I, I, I you, should, you should try to find it. It's hilarious, uh, but also very cool. Um, yeah. So Halloween's number one. I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of it. We had a lot of overlap on at least movies that were either in the top five or movies that we had on our honorable mention list. No surprise. Um, not a lot of yeah, we didn't have a lot of disagreement. I need to add something extra as far as television goes um, or streaming. I, I have to give you full credit. Um, 
probably my favorite. You love Stranger Things like no other person I know. Um, Perfect. Perfect. I like like Stranger Things. (laughs) Got a Stranger Things shirt on right now. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Shout out, yeah. Shout out Hawkins. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I like Stranger Things. You love it. Love it. Um, But to me, the, the, the goat of horror television or streaming and and i don't think stranger things is necessarily horror anyways but um haunting of hill house on netflix and i have to give you full credit because you were like dude you gotta watch this it's the best it's the best it is the fucking best um it it is like my favorite thing i have watched in the last five years um it's not just a good like horror show it's just a good show yes uh, period um, I try to convince my wife to watch it and she's like, no way in hell. And I'm like, I, I said, like at the end, you'll feel something like it's like emotional and it's like a family drama, almost more than a, a horror. The horror elements are awesome and really, really original. Um, but the show is just ridiculously good. Mike Flanagan, he made that. He made uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, what was the other one that we really Midnight liked? Mass. Midnight Mass, which was crazy and love yeah, that, that was, one as well yeah that was more of a slow burn um but yeah haunted hill house if anyone has not seen that man you gotta go check that out i completely agree i'm glad i remember i'm glad you actually watched it You're like holy shit this is great because the first yeah. episode just the end of her, her screaming at that i mean that literally again i'll go back to i could feel my heart pumping through my chest that scared the crap out of me and then the whole you know the i don't want to give it away for people that haven't watched it but the back lady episode was probably that was the one and, yeah yeah that oh man and just the right. shot of like i said it's just a good show the continuous shot of them in the funeral home and then yeah really cool back to mm-hmm. i mean very well done i think like i said well flanagan's done. great i love all his stuff but that yeah. i think it's just the pinnacle of scary series for sure yeah. and i'll I'll, re- I'll be re-watching it before halloween for sure yeah, I think I want to rewatch it. Um, I was it's one of those where I was kind of disappointed it was it was over. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I I read somewhere he's going away from Netflix. Um, what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he got a deal with another streaming entity, but uh, yeah, he was he had a really good run there. Um, yeah. Um, horror movie season. Yeah, check out if anyone has cable or. YouTube TV, whatever, AMC every um the whole month of October replays some some classic horror movie. Um I think like three or four a night, um, obviously. So a lot of good content there. Um yeah, that's all I got. This was fun. This was fun. I lo- I could talk about this for hours, and it sounds like you know, our, our wives or some of this don't watch these things, so no. I'll give up something to chat about it with uh actually i just want to go rewatch either halloween or haunting of hill house right now so i might do that <laughs> before bed just to it sounds weird because but i love the feeling it's great it's, it's yeah. amazing so yeah um and the other one that i think we both want to see is talk to me that came out yes. this summer um yes. that got an extreme amount of buzz um you know it's supposed to be the the 2023 horror movie um, there's a lot of other ones I want to see. I haven't seen Pearl. I haven't seen X. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any of those either. Yeah, Infinity watch. Pool, which I heard was more weirder than weirder than horror. But um, there's there's a lot of the. I really haven't seen a, a true horror movie since um, Skin Marink <laughs> earlier this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, and my kids are like, you know, so my oldest is eleven. My my twins are nine. Both the boys, they they're like they're. Like Dad, we want to go to the haunted castle and Black oh, yeah. Forest, and um, you know. So my oldest went last year. So my younger one, he's he's like scared if a spider is in the room, and he's like, "I'm going. It's going to be awesome." I said, "Dude, you are not going to be able to handle it." He's like, "I know I'm going to be scared, but you know that's just kind of part of it. That's that's why I go." And I'm like, <laughs> "Like good luck." Are, yeah, I'm like, I can't wait to see how this goes. Um, but it's cool to see your, your kids kind of get into the that you know that the whole season right of Halloween and and all that. So. All right, Colin, good to have you back. Um, next time, let's not make it a year. 
and uh, <laughs> maybe we'll have to do some UFO discussion down the road if you're interested in that. Very interested. I will prepare heavily for that. That sounds great. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting, and I just love this season, so hopefully everybody else does. Yes, sir. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to Your Best Bets. We'll catch you next time.